which is what makes time travel possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tell Me About Your Damn Book. I'm your host, Stephen Lomer, and ladies and gentlemen, we are classing up the joint this week. You know why? Because we have our very first doctor on the show. So make sure that your noses are clean and that you've got clean underwear on because <laughs> my goodness, it would be embarrassing if you were to meet Dr. Wendy Jensen and weren't prepared. Wendy? Hello. Thank you so much for being here. That was quite a greeting. I don't think I've had one quite like that before. <laughs> but at we, least my patients are animals. That's true. So, that, that's so. true. You do have different greetings from your patients than you would from me, I would think. We can set people at ease. <laughs> Although, you know, sometimes people think I, I, I sound like a braying horse. So, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, it might sound familiar to you. It's entirely possible. Um, so I, I put together some notes so that uh, I would be able to talk to you about some of the stuff nice. that you've done and, and accomplished and, and, and all of that stuff. And uh, as we were preparing, my uh, production manager did a little research on her own, and she told me that you grew up in three different countries. Yes. Is that true? I did. All okay. right. Let's, let's hear the different countries and was, how that happened. It was because my dad was in the army. Okay. Was in the military. So we ended up in India when I was in elementary school, well, kindergarten. Wow. And then we were in, um, of course, the States. And then we were also in Iran before really? the Shah lost power, so in the 70s. Wow. Back when it was still safe to be there. <laughs> Re relatively yes. safe to be there. <laughs> my mother was forward thinking and sent us to uh, an American, not a, not the American school, the international school mm -hmm. in, in Tehran, so that we got exposed to a lot of different cultures, which was really valuable. Wow. And what do you remember about India? Just, I remember vividly looking over the wall, and I would be five, you know, kindergarten, looking over the wall of my compound and just staring at the people, the poor people there. And hold, one lady holding her hands out to catch cow manure, fresh, catch it, and put it on her home to help block out, I guess, dust or probably not gonna be cold there. But and I remember thinking, why are they living like that and we're like this? And that's, that's, that was my little piece of India. Uh, you've been practicing 100% homeopathy since 1992. Yes. How did you come to, well, all right, just just so that, you know, there may be people who don't know what homeopathy is. What, let's, let's define our terms here. What, what is homeopathy? It's a practice of medicine that takes into account every symptom. And so looking in, in a day picture, it's everything that the animal is experiencing in that day. But expand that to back when they were a puppy or a kitten or a foal, it's the symptoms that they had in those illnesses as well. And it takes into account the environment, their personality, the kind of work they're doing or not doing, if they're laying on the couch or if they're you know, pulling the plow. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's one of the holistic therapies, holistic meaning the whole animal. Okay. Um, it also, the medicines are derived by um, highly diluting substances um, so that to all intents and purposes, the actual physical atoms aren't present anymore. So that's what gets a lot of our skeptics going. Um, so I consider it a, an oral dose of acupuncture. Ah. Because you're not putting anything in with the needles. Okay. But it seems to be accepted more. Well, yeah, acupuncture does something. It's, so it's an energy of the substance. Okay. And that works with the energy of the body. Um, the body can't heal can't react, can't really live without this energy. And we don't mix, we don't access it when we use our regular medicines. Um, we're just damping down the symptoms. Okay. So I so, love it. So I'm does, in love with it. <laughs> and I can tell, I can absolutely <laughs> tell. Does, does homeopathy reject Western medicine and, and Western medicines? Rejection is might maybe a hard word, but if I have a patient that's been on a lot of regular medicines, mm -hmm. they are much harder to treat and to get better. Really? And now keep in mind they're coming to me as a last resort. Mm -hmm. So I have very difficult cases. I don't treat just sneezing and itching. Right. You know, and, and red eyes. Uh -huh. I treat cancer, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. And when the animals have already tried a whole lot of other things, a lot of drugs, they're much sicker. Really? Much weaker. Interesting. Yes. Let's let's talk about critics for a minute. What what do you hear from from critics of, of veterinary homeopathy? 
there's they call there's a actually there's a, a, a film out now I think it's called Magic Pills by Amanda Moore. It'd okay. Be great for people to look that up if you're interested. And she's she's interviewed one of the skeptics and he's got a row of plastic ducks, and those are his quacks. So that's what he likes to display when he's talking <laughs> about homeopathy. So yeah, being a very shy, introverted person, uh, it's very difficult to go to, because I still go to regular uh, continuing education, mm -hmm. you know, merge with a, they call it allopathy, just yeah. means giving medicine that's similar to, uh, <clears throat> no, that's opposite to the symptoms, allopathy, or, and then homeopathy is the same, you mm -hmm. give symptoms that are similar to the symptoms. I think I'm blurring my words. <laughs> Remedies that are similar to the symptoms, okay. homeopathy. So when I go to an allopathic conference, I often don't talk about what I do, um, because there's a knee-jerk negative reaction, and I'm not sure why. Because when I left regular practice, and then discover, I went to a lecture on homeopathy, and it was like my head blew apart. I was like, oh, you know, this makes sense. <laughs> it it appeals to my mind. Mm -hmm. So it's strange to have them call it voodoo, and who, when it <laughs> takes me a lot of study and thought to come up with a remedy. You know, it's, I wish it was voodoo. I wish it was voodoo. So I that would be a lot easier, sure. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Now, I'm, now, some things that don't take a lot of thinking are also helpful. Massage, everybody knows that's helpful. Yeah. Um, just just being a positive person, you know, taking your dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. But the remedy takes a lot of study. A lot of books all over sure. the place. In sure, my yeah. So, yeah, that's... I guess what they don't understand, I, I'm not sure. I can't explain the antagonism, but it's out there. Okay. Well, it's. I, I, I would like to think that it's. It, it goes back to the whole thing, fearing the, the things you don't understand. You don't understand. Right. Of right. course, if you can just pop a pill and suddenly the symptoms go away, then you, you think you're cured. But, exactly. uh, you know. So uh, then you feel, do you feel, uh, despite your, your critics with their, with their lineups of, of ducks, do you, do you feel that uh, it's, it's becoming more accepted? It's, it's becoming a little more mainstream? I think it is because I'll be surprised now with a new person that I'm meeting either at a party or on the phone and they'll understand when I say, oh, you mean not just treat the symptoms. And they already know about that. Okay. So I, I'm feeling like the understanding is there. It's growing a little bit okay. in the public. Nice. Yeah. Maybe that's a generational thing. Maybe the younger generation is a little more open-minded. Could be, yeah. Whereas, you know, our, our grandparents just took a pill and that was it. Oh, I know. <laughs> and they work really well to suppress the symptoms. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes you perfect sense. You just wonder sense. why, as you're getting older, you have all these chronic health issues. They don't relate it to suppressing the symptoms when they're young. Hmm. Now, is this true? You you make house calls? I do. Does That's... anyone else make house calls? Does anyone know what a house call... Maybe we should define house calls. We really I, I don't should. think people know what house calls are anymore. It's when doctors used to go to patients' houses to treat them. I mean, it, it, this is true. This really happened. So you you go to the animals and... and and do your thing? If you, there's a book out there called All My Patients Are Under the Bed. Okay. That's the house call bed. He's, a, he's in New York City. But yeah, so the living room and the kitchen table are my exam room table and my exam room. Um, I do, the, what helps is seeing the patient in their own environment. Okay. Especially with homeopathy. Because you can have a scared, timid, especially cats, they mm -hmm. can just disappear. Their personality is gone. Yes. They're terrified. I don't see anything in there. I have to just get the information by talking. Mm -hmm. You know, what are they? What are their habits like? What are, what's their GI system doing? But I'm not seeing them very well. Right. So being in the home is a lot better. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, how, how far afield do you go or have you gone? How, how far do you get drawn away from New Hampshire? Oh, I think I'd stay in New Hampshire because that's where I'm licensed. Okay. And I only go about 40 minutes away maximum. Okay. But there's still plenty of, of, of patients in that, in that radius? There are. So, um, but if I had to support myself that way, it'd be hard mm -hmm. until we get more people that want homeopathy. Um, so I do also consult with veterinarians with their clients. So I'll do phone work in that way. Oh wow! So okay. if they have their vet already, I'll be up an added voice. Okay. And when you're not doing any of this stuff, which is hard to imagine, 
you're playing the violin. Oh, that's right. <laughs> is, it, is that lifelong? Have you been playing the violin for a long time? Since I was 10. Really? Yeah. And yeah. Is, that, is that a relaxation technique for you? Oh, it sure is. Yeah. All day it sounds long. like you can use it. Uh, <laughs> right now. All day long with the books or on the phone or studying past health records. And to just sit back and get the violin out. And I'll, I'll play in musicals. I'll play in the, in the pit crew. Uh -huh. It's my favorite to be kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. And it just... It, brings my life force back up again. Yeah, <laughs> put it that way. There it is, people. If you want your life force brought up again, try the violin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we need to step away for a moment. We will be right back with Dr. Wendy Jensen. Welcome back to Tell Me About Your Damn Book. I am here with Dr. Wendy Jensen, and I can't help but notice that now there is something between us, and uh, it looks like it's got a cover, it looks like it's got some pages, so there's really only one thing I can say about that. So Wendy, tell me about your damn book. <laughs> Well, it started because I wanted to, actually I wrote and gave a lecture series to vets who had taken the professional course, but they just needed a review. They needed to go back because I was seeing some difficulty in their cases, which I went through myself. Okay. And so I, I did a series of lectures and then I thought, you know, this would be a good book. <laughs> well, right, I did uh -huh. all the work. Sure. Make it, make it on paper. That's what happens with all authors. This would be a, a good, good book. book. Yes. And off they so go. You probably know this well. <laughs> you know that line. So when I started writing, started working on it, it occurred to me that the audience was small because I, I wish we have a few hundred veterinary homeopaths. I wish there was more. Well, I wanted also, I also thought of my clients. You know, they come to me and I talk to them, I talk a blue streak, I give a handout or whatever. But if I had a book that had in it, what do you need to know if you're going to work with a homeopathic vet? Then that would be really valuable. Sure. And it also helps the, the beginning vet. So it, it, it's actually written for the clients. Okay. Um, but the veterinary course uses it as required reading. So I guess it's good enough for them. I guess it's good enough for them. So that's what why the book came to be. Okay. How long did it uh, did it take you? Oh, a couple of years, I think. A couple of years to write yeah, it? Yeah, because I already had the lecture notes before that, so it made it shorter than I'd otherwise have been <laughs> to write. And what what level would you say? Could could so could a, per, a lay person just take it off the shelf and read it and understand what, what's going on? Absolutely. It's written for the lay person. Okay. Um, and also, um, the veterinarian would get a lot out of it because they don't need to know that it's creatinine versus a value that measures kidneys, you know, kidney health. So it's written for the right person. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, are you working on anything else at the moment? I am. <laughs> I'm starting a novel, and i got to tell you, novels are a lot harder. Novels are a lot harder. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, they are. Welcome, so, welcome to the world of novels. Thank you. Um, can a, you tell us anything about it? A little bit. It's about a young woman in the animal protection field. I did some work in that field before I came back, came and started homeopathy. Um, and she's also suffering some abusive situation. And so learning about protecting the animals and learning, meeting people that value the lives of even cats, dogs, chickens, rats, she, she starts to apply it to herself and realize, wait a minute, what about me? And so it, it's a kind of coming of age healing coming of awareness kind of book. Okay. So there's no homeopathy in it, but there's plenty of animals. <laughs> nice. And does it have a title yet? Right now it's, but I already said goodbye. 
Oh, okay. And any notion of when we might be seeing that? No, first I'll have to find a good agent. Okay. Yeah. You wouldn't consider uh, Indie Pub? I definitely would. Okay. This is Indie. Oh, is that? Oh, nice. It's Indie Pub, people. That's, that's yeah. pretty slick. Uh-uh. Nice. Black Rose Riding. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, so, in season one of Tell Me About Your Damn Book, we had a segment called uh, Questions from the Great Unwashed. And that was where we solicited questions uh, from people via social, social media to, to ask the author. And uh, it, was, it was a bit of a mixed bag, as you can, <laughs> as you imagine. can imagine. So, so we have um, standardized the questions, and now it's a segment called The Five. And it's the same five questions that we we ask every author that comes on. And, and if you're willing, are you willing to, to try I'm the willing. five? All right. Yes, let's then do let's it. Let's do the five. Uh, question one. If they published an author's yearbook today and you were in it, what would you be voted most likely to do? Most likely to do? Yes. I guess um, convince the president to support homeopathy. How's that? Wow. Woo-hoo. Most likely to convince the president to support homeopathy. <laughs> Boom. Okay. The gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> nice. Now I'm in trouble. I'm going straight to question two. Um, <laughs> which four faces would appear on your author's Mount Rushmore? Oh, that's a good one. Well, it has to be Samuel Hahnemann is one. He's the founder of homeopathy. Okay. Um, and no, also an author. Uh, yes, okay. also an author. Good. Oh, wait, are they also authors? All authors, Oops. yes. You gotta listen carefully when you're <laughs> asking questions. Um, so, another author. Um, I guess I'm com- coming up with more homeopaths. James Kent was one of the early homeopaths in the United States, and he's amazing. Okay. Um, then there's George Dimitriadis. He's an Australian author who's written a repertory um, that is the most accurate one that I've ever seen. And accuracy in our business is pretty important. I would think so. Uh, I would hope so. So yeah, those are the ones coming up to my head, my top of my head right now. And the nice thing is, you know, a lot of when we ask this question, a lot of people say very famous authors you know jk rowling and stephen king it's nice that that these guys are getting a plug because otherwise you know without you they probably never would come up on any other authors mount rushmore so (laughs) good on you uh question three what's something about you that if revealed would surprise and amaze those who know you best well that's a little scary i like to row (laughs) You like to row? Yes. Okay. Where, where did this come from? Um, my kids got into crew. Okay. And then they decided that we should learn, their parents. Uh-huh. And so we learned. And then this past summer, I sculled 300 miles. Really? Yes. Wow. So, okay. That, there's a fact. That qualifies. That's a great answer to question three. Most people are just like, oh, I don't know. But that's, <laughs> that's a good one right there. Uh, question four. What is your favorite curse word? And in what phrase would you be most likely to use it? Oh, <laughs> okay. You don't pull any punches. No, no. We have to know what your favorite curse. I, I, I imagine in in what you do, you have come up with some very creative <laughs> curse words. Probably not. See that. See, once you have children, you get them all out of your language. Ah. So you know, mine are just not that old yet. So well, they're old enough. So I guess I'd have to say, you know, damn it. That's very boring, isn't it? No, no. But it'd be it's... probably when I hit my head, because it's so funny, but when you hit your head, that's when you're going to swear. <laughs> I would agree with that. Right? I would definitely I agree with that. Swear. And are there any <laughs> variations of damn it, or is it just that's the, ex- that, that's that's the exclamation? That's, that's the it. word and the phrase. That's why damn I'm it. here with my damn book. <laughs> damn book, yeah, that's right. Book. That's right. Tell me about your book, damn it. <laughs> And finally, question five. If the world ended right after this video, what final message would you want to convey to your fans? You did it right. Keep going. Nice. That's a great yeah. message. I love it. And I can't think of any better way to end the video than on that. My goodness. 
So I would like to thank Dr. Wendy Jensen for joining us today and classing up the joint. <laughs> the name of the book is The Practical Handbook of Veterinary Homeopathy. And where can people get it if they're looking to? Um, it's on Amazon. Amazon.com? As well as from the publisher, Black Rose Writing. Black Rose Writing or Amazon.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Good day. <laughs>